I think, I think there are at least two really important points that people need to understand when they think about uh, the question of religion and the question of ending exclusion from uh, marriage. One is that the best way to protect religious freedom is for us to make sure that government is not making this decision, that, that religions make their own decisions about whom they're going to marry and what their doctrine is. It's, it's really coming to understand the difference between religious rights of marriage, R-I-T-E-S, and the legal right to marry, R-I-G-H-T. Government has no business dictating to religions what their religious rights of marriage should be. It should be up to each religion to decide for itself. But religions should not be dictating to the government who gets to exercise the legal right to marry. Religion should not be dictating, no religion should dictate to any government official who can get a civil marriage license from the government. Now, government doesn't license bar mitzvahs. Government doesn't license communions. Government license marriage because marriage is a legal institution that triggers legal and economic responsibilities and rights and protections. And as regards the legal institution, it's important for religious freedom as well as for personal freedom that that be decided under the Constitution through the government, not religion. But the good news is we can have that respect, we can have that separation without it interfering with religious freedom. And people can think of it this way. There are some religions that say, for example, that people should not be allowed to divorce. And if they divorce, they should not be allowed to remarry. Now, the government cannot, in our society, call over to the cardinal and order the cardinal to issue uh, marriage licenses or to perform a marriage for a divorced couple. Government can't do it. But the cardinal should not be able to call over to the government licensing bureau and say, don't issue the marriage license to that Catholic couple or that Jewish couple or that Hindu couple. Two different things. We have this separation in order to protect religious freedom as well as personal freedom. And the legal freedom to marry is separate from the religious ceremonies that each religion is free to decide for itself. So that's one very important point. The second really important point about religion is that when people sometimes talk about religion when thinking about their position on the freedom to marry, they think about religion in a kind of formal way but they actually don't think about what their religion really means to them. For most of us, most of the religions that most of us belong to have values and teach values. And those values are almost always important principles like love and treating others as you would want to be treated and judging not that you not be judged and don't put obstacles in the path of your neighbor and respect commitment and show compassion and render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Leave to the state what belongs to the state and worship as you worship in your place of worship. These are the values that most religions teach and they are the values that argue strongly for ending legal discrimination when it comes to who gets a civil marriage license from the government. Respecting the freedom to marry under the law in no way forces anyone to change their religious views on religious marriage. But it does fulfill the underlying values that most religions exist to teach.